Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from a Tom, and I think that is Schwitzgebel, German name certainly. Uh, he is studying to get his technician license currently, so he doesn't have a call sign yet. He will shortly, I'm sure. Just watched your whisper video and was very thankful about your detailed explanation of the system and its operation. Whisper is something that I want to do, but my question is, will I have the permissions to use it in lower frequencies besides 6 and 10 meters? I think the answer is no, and you're correct, uh, if I am understanding the rules correctly. Let's take a look at the U.S. Amateur Bands chart. Okay, now we're looking for, um, let's see, this shows the different privileges for the different types of uh, bands, extra, advanced, general, novice, and tech. See right there, okay, extra, advanced, general, novice, and tech. Now, on 80 meters, see that uh, squiggly line? That means CW only. Okay, you next have privileges on 40 meters, and the 40 meter privileges are CW only. Okay, the same is true for 15 meters, um, CW only. Uh, now, we get over to 10 meters, and now notice what goes on here. Novice and tech have got yellow. What is yellow? Yellow is single sideband phone. Okay. Now we'll go down and look at the red. What is red? Red is RIDI and data. RIDI and data. Okay, now RIDI and uh, what you're talking about uh, for um, whisper is data. It's a data mode. So you can use it on 10 meters in that limited area right there. Now note that the VHF bands, the VHF bands are all available to you. You can do whatever you want in, the, um, in those VHF bands. So to answer your question, your research is correct. Now, what's the history of this? The history of this is uh, the combination of the novice and the technician license. It used to be many moons ago, but not so many that I can't remember it. Um, back when I had my advanced class license, I had to upgrade to extra. Um, if you passed your technician test, you had to take a five word per minute code test. Then that five word per minute code test went away. And then people were saying, wait a minute, what about the novice license? Well, the novice license wasn't given out anymore, but there's still some people who have their novice licenses, even to this day. And what um, they did was basically combine the privileges of the novice and the then technician into the t new technician to where you have novice privileges and tech privileges. Novice privileges were uh, some CW on 80, 40, 15, and 10. Okay, and on 10 you could do some voice. And uh, also on 220 megahertz or 1.25 centimeters, you could do FM, okay? Now, that's the old 220 band, which is now the 222 megahertz band. There's three megahertz there of largely unused spectrum that hams can use for lots of different things. And there is also a one megahertz wide ham band at 119 to 100, um, 219 to 220 megahertz for repeater backhauls. Okay, so uh, the technician, of course, could use anything from 50 megahertz on up. So they combined the two. That gave techs the voice privileges on 10 meters 
and the data privileges on 10 meters and also those other CW privileges. Okay, so that's how it came to be the way it is. Now, the league has talked about uh, trying to persuade the FCC to uh, give some HF privileges to technicians. The FCC, <laughs> bless them, uh, are saying that uh, they really don't have the time to mess with trivial little details like this in ham radio. And uh, the uh, ARRL would be happy to pick up that regulatory burden, I'm sure. But the FCC hasn't quite agreed to that yet. So uh, the FCC is busy earning billions of dollars uh, auctioning off frequency spectrums for cell phones. Made a lot of money on that for the government. They've been a real cash cow for the uh, government. So um, it used to be that frequency use was assigned based on public interest. Um, but then when everybody wanted their taxes lowered, the government still costs just as much money to run as it always has. So it gets what it needs to be a, a fees. That's why we have to now pay a $35 fee for certain amateur radio actions. Okay. So, uh, the net of this is that, uh, uh, yes, you can operate on a six and 10 meters. Of course, anything on up uh, with uh, eight, with your tech, you'll be able to operate that little bit on 10 plus uh, whatever is allowed on, on 6 and, and on up. Now, is it worth it to put a station together to do 10 meter whisper? The answer is certainly yes, absolutely. Uh, the uh, bands are opening up with the higher sunspot numbers right now and that will happen for the next four years or so before they start to fade away a little bit so the time to get on hf is now and you'll have a lot of fun talking to a lot of people very far away from you anywhere in the world that's part of the magic of ham radio is just how far and in what direction your radio signal can go and where you can hear from so there you have it if you'd like to help out this channel financially, you can do so by going to dcastler.com support. If you would like to enter our monthly giveaway, go to dcastler.com giveaway for the instructions. And until we next meet, 73.